Hello, how's it going? I'm Andy and welcome back to episode 9 of Scratch Building Basics. Uh, this episode I plan on painting the ship that I built in the previous video. I'll start uh, giving it a rust coat first with a sponge this time instead of a brush and then I'll go over that with my final colour, uh, leaving some of that rust coat exposed. So yeah, let's get into it. Alrighty, so I've already got my colours on my palette. And my ship has the brown texture coat on it already, but I'm gonna give it another coat of burnt umber anyway, just to darken it down a bit. Uh, so my colours, like I said, are burnt umber, and then I've got some canary yellow, and then some clay, and then I've got some pomegranate, and that's gonna be all the colours I'm gonna use for my rust coat this time. And then I'm gonna put the burnt umber on with this scruffy brush, but ev everything else I'm gonna put on with the uh, it's a sponge, which is just cut from a uh, Mr. Scrubby from the kitchen. So I'm just going to take my scruffy brush and give the ship a good coat of this burnt umber all over, uh, just getting it into all the cracks and crevices, uh, just to make sure uh, I've got nice shading in, in all the low areas. And as always, uh, not brushing it on, I'm going to stipple it on. Uh, this just helps with the texture and uh, it helps with the shading as well. And in between every coat or when I run out of dry spots to hold, I would hit it with a hairdryer uh, just to speed up the drying time a wee bit. And that's the coat of burnt umber done and I can move on now to the colours. And yeah, I'm going to use these sponges this time for applying my, my colours. Normally I would just stipple it on with a brush, but this time I'm going to load this sponge up and just carefully uh, dab it all around the ship, just to, just to try a sponge for a change. And that seems to be working okay. It's putting it on a bit thick in places, but that's not too bad because this is going to be a heavily textured ship anyway. Um, it's not really getting it into the deeper crevices the way I want to, so I might have to go back with a smaller brush. I know there's a wee bit uh, overloaded it there a wee bit, put on a wee bit too much. And again, hitting it with the hairdryer just in between, just so we don't smudge it. And here I'm actually loading up the side of the sponge, just to try and get it into those uh, crevices a wee bit more. Take some of that paint off just so I don't make the same mistake again. And again, it, it's working okay, but I think it would be a wee bit quicker w with, the, with the brush. But I'm going to stick with it. I started with a sponge now and I'll finish. I'm trying my best here to, to push it into some of these deeper crevices and some of these smaller spots, but I'm going to have to go back in with a smaller brush just to stipple some in, stipple some in there. And now I'm just going back with my small scruffy brush just to get some of that colour into some of the deeper spots. Because um, those are the places that are probably going to be exposed the most, so I do want to make sure there's some, some variation in colour in, in those deeper sort of joins and, and crevices. So yeah, just going back with my smaller brush just to make sure it's completely covered. And that's the yellow done, uh, completely stippled all over. Um, so basically now what I do is move down the palette through my colours and stipple it all over again. Just build up some variation and some texture all over the ship. Um, get a coat of orange done and orange, what am I talking about? That's clay, clearly it's clay. <laughs> and then I move on to pomegranate and get a coat of it done all over. And just being careful not to completely cover up what I've already done. And again, making sure it's in all those deep spots and cracks and crevices or anywhere that I know is going to be left exposed. So that's the stipple coat done. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to go back and mix any more colours or anything. I think that's good enough. And what I'm going to do now is take some blue tack or some poster tack and uh, just put it in the spots that I want that rust to be left exposed. Um, it's mainly for my own benefit. Just so I remember, I mean I would do this freehand most of the time but then I end up forgetting in places that, that I want the rust to be exposed, I end up covering it up. So this time I'm, I'm covering up a blue tack first and then it'll definitely be left exposed. And then I can go back and feather in the edges that are left, uh, but we'll, I'll show you that later. And I've got my colours mixed ready to go here, 
uh, the first green, the dark one there, it's just a holly green, just straight out of the bottle. Um, what I've done is mixed it with some of the canary yellow, just to lighten it up a bit. And that's going to be my undercoat. So what I'm going to do is uh, completely cover it all, obviously bar the places that I want left exposed, <laughs> in this lighter green undercoat. And then I'm going to come back with my darker holly green. I'll leave these light green edges exposed. And I think that just <laughs> looks better for the weathering. And uh, what it is, I'll dab this on randomly, and if some of places get randomly left exposed, I'll kind of go, just go with it, and leave them exposed. And yeah, just make sure I get in between all these filled in. And yep, that's pretty much it for the undercoat, just get the whole ship covered, like that. And this is what I would normally have to do if I don't use the blue tech to mask it off first. I just have to make sure that any places of wear and tear that I want left exposed, I have to remember where they are. So uh, that, I forgot to mark that bit on top, it's just as well I remembered. And you can see that has left some nice streaks there and the edges are a bit harsh at, at the minute. But what I do is go back now and just feather it in a wee bit some of these uh, places that it's just a bit too much exposed for my, for my taste. So I'll go back and just gently feather those in and carefully, carefully fill those in a wee bit. And at this point I've got hardly any paint on my brush at all, I'm just sort of gently feathering these in just so they blend in a wee bit more. And that's the undercoat pretty much done, you can you can see the difference there between feathering it in and not feathering this bit isn't done, whereas the, the other bit here it, it is. So you can sort of see the difference when you, when you go back and just get with a dry brush and just feather those edges in a wee bit. And I can move on now to my holly green, or my dark green. And what I just do now is use the undercoat as a guide. So I always want to leave an edge of the undercoat exposed. I just slowly work my way around the ship, uh, being very careful to make sure that some of that lighter green is always still showing on the edge of the dark green. For my next build, I plan on doing a, a factory fresh, pristine ship, yeah, that's no rust, and that's going to be my 1000 subscriber special, so I'm going to uh, give that away, so uh, hopefully it'll turn out okay. And that's the final colour, pretty much done. I just need to be a bit more careful at the front here, making sure I leave these edges exposed so I left it to last. And that's the final colour, done. And I can move on now, I'm just going to use some red and highlight some areas in red, just like the, the guns and maybe some of these vents at the front. So I've got some Santa red here and uh, I'll just take it and highlight some of these areas on the front and then do, like I said, just do some of the the guns on the side here. And if you're wondering why all my colours have names like Holly Green and Santa Red, it's because it came from a, a set of Christmas colours that I bought. I was making uh, Christmas ornaments and I bought a set of Christmas colours. But they're all good colours, I mean, uh, and obviously you can mix them, so I, I think they're dead on. They're good quality paints and uh, they're nice enough colours. So I don't mind from the ships Holly Green and Santa Red. That's all my red highlights done. Uh, I've did the wires there and just a few bits at the back, uh, just to make them stand out a wee bit more. And now I'm going to move on on my mini ship. I did a checker pattern, so I'm going to keep the same sort of theme and paint a few white panels on the side here and just use my pen to fill in the checker pattern. Alrighty, check pattern done. Uh, now time to move on to just a, a few more wee details. So I'll get some metallics ready here. And this is just some metallic pewter and extreme sheen, of course. And I'm gonna just use it to uh, highlight the cockpit 
area here, cockpit window, windshield, whatever you want to call it. Alrighty, that's my extreme sheen, windshield done. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, now I'm going to take some uh, warm penny, it's just some more metallic, uh, and I'm going to highlight some of these areas at the back, uh, just some of these tubes and pipes and things. Uh, and then I'm going to take it and dry brush the thrusters with it as well. And I'm just going to load my brush up and clean most of the paint off of it here with a paper towel and just dry brush these thrusters at the back. Uh, I don't want to cover up too much of this rust but I still want to give it like a metallic sheen. There we go, dry brushing done. Um, I was going to leave it there but I, I don't really like these thrusters at the back. I think they need a wee bit more of a highlight so I'll get some more metallic. Uh, this is just some vintage brass, uh, again just a matte metallic this time uh, and uh, I'm just going to dab this on and round the, round the rear thruster here just to make it stand out a wee bit more and uh, differentiate it a wee bit from the, the rest of the thruster housing. That's more like it now, it stands out a wee bit better and uh, I'll just take my black here and do a few wee dabs into these low spots. Uh, these uh, are like concave, so I didn't have to drill them out, but I'll, I'll dab a wee bit of black in. And I think just to highlight this uh, laser cannon on the side here, I'll give it a wee dry brush of yellow, uh, just to give it a wee bit of a glow. And there we go, that's her done. <laughs> it's nicely weathered. Uh, I know the colours look a bit bright at the minute, but we're going to fix that now. I'm going to take my uh, white spirit and oil paint wash. This is just some uh, burnt umber mixed with white spirit. And I'm just going to take this and plaster the whole ship. Just get it everywhere, uh, down into all those nooks and crannies. And then I'll take some kitchen paper and just dab it off some of the areas that I don't want it on as heavily. And then I'm going to go back in with a smaller brush and just put some drips and dab it on in, in, the, in the different areas. But I'm trying to hold the ship at an angle so the drips kind of run in a direction that they would go if the ship was flying. And I kind of use the hairdryer to help, help with that. Uh, just to kind of blow and move the, the wash in different directions. And I want to go for a pretty grubby look. Um, I like to think that this ship has seen loads of action, but it hasn't took any hits. So yeah, I definitely I'm going in heavy with the, with the wash. I'm just going to take one final pass with the wash here just to highlight some of these rivets and, and normally I would uh, hit them with a wee dab of metallic paint just to highlight them a wee bit more but I'm just going to use the wash here to, to highlight them this time and then again use my blow dryer to shift some of that uh, wash in different directions and that's it done I think that's enough wash uh, it's been well loved and well used so uh, I'll leave it now to dry overnight and then give it a coat of clear lacquer in the morning so, there you have it. I uh, hope this was helpful. Any questions or comments, you just know where to go. Down below there, work away. And uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!